everyone and welcome back to Phantom Weather Channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Tropical Storm Elsa, which is officially formed east of the Caribbean islands and is expected to move westward, potentially posing a threat to portions of the United States. This could also potentially form into a hurricane. We're also going to be breaking down the severe weather threat that exists this afternoon into the evening for portions of the mid-Atlantic. So we're going to be talking about what the, those storms are going to look like and also what time you can expect that severe weather in your area. Before we hop into the video, though, I would ask that you guys do subscribe to Phantom Weather Channel if you guys would like to get weather-related videos and hazard as weather live streams. Also, be sure to drop a like on the video and share this video out on social media if you guys would like other people to see this video as well. Let's hop right into it here. We're taking a look at all of, uh, all of our disturbances in the Atlantic here uh, via our National Hurricane Center. As you can see, we currently have Tropical Storm Elsa there that is formed east of the Caribbean islands and northeast of South America. Again, this is expected to move westward and eventually northward, potentially impacting areas like the Caribbean and eventually into the United States as well, which you guys will see in just a second here. Breaking down what the storm currently looks like, you can see it is a, a, a fairly organized storm system here. Definitely looks like a tropical cyclone uh, where the storm is currently situated right now, and this is expected to become more organized. As we take a look at our model track guidance here, here is all of our global and hurricane models as far as what they think for where this storm is going to track. And most of them are pretty consistent here with this one actually moving through the Southern Caribbean islands and eventually moving through areas like uh, south of Haiti and the uh, Dominican Republic, eventually impacting areas like Cuba and then also making landfall there in portions of Southern or Western uh, coastal uh, Florida here. And this will eventually move northeastward off the uh, southeast coast of the United States. Um, and that's pretty much consistent for what our models expect here. But overall, they're more consistent with this one just moving through the Caribbean islands, making uh, most impacts in those areas there. And take a look at what our GFS models look like as far as this goes. It's pretty complicated here, uh, and they're not in great agreement by any means. But they, they have a pretty general track for where this one's going to go. Uh, as far westward as it could go, it could potentially uh, hit the Yucatan Peninsula and then make landfall in Texas and move westward. Uh, do I think that will happen? Absolutely not, because none of the models are consistent with that happening, but it is possible. I think, again, more likely that it will move through the Caribbean islands, uh, making landfall in western Florida, and then moving northeastward off the southeast coast of the United States, which, mo which uh, most models are in fairly good agreement in. And take a look at our GP, uh, GEPS model here. This one here is uh, pretty consistent um, for this one, kind of taking a similar track as we just talked about. But on the western side, there are actually several models that are showing this moving through various uh, Gulf states here and then eventually moving northeastward by the time it reaches the Ohio Valley. Uh, again, I don't think that will happen. I think it will move through the Caribbean and then eventually through the southeastern United States where it will make landfall. I don't think that it will uh, move through much of the Gulf United States other than western Florida. And then take a look at our model intensity guidance here for this storm system. You can see that most of them are very consistent with this one being a tropical storm, but we actually have a large handful of models here that are showing this one becoming a Category 1 hurricane. And some of them are actually showing this happening as early as within the next 24 hours. And we actually do have a few models here that are showing this briefly becoming a weak to moderate Category 2 hurricane. Uh, but overall, there is a large handful of models that are showing this one at least becoming a Category 1. Uh, so we will have to keep an eye on that. Now, the... Um National Hurricane Center has not uh, posed much attention to this one. They do think that it will likely just remain a tropical storm, uh, but that does not mean that things can't change. Again, this is a large handful of models that are showing this one at least becoming a Category 1, so we will definitely have to keep an eye on it here, and that would probably that would uh, possibly be our first hurricane uh, of the Atlantic for this season here. And take a look at what our Tropical Storm Force wind speed probabilities look like here. You can see where the storm is currently situated here by this dot. Uh, within this purple shade, this is where we have a 90 uh, plus percent chance here of seeing some tropical storm force winds, which is 40 mile per hour winds sustained within a one minute average here. Uh, but really anywhere from these uh, orange shades all the way up to this purple is where some tropical storm force winds are going to be likely. This will be possible for portions of the broken up eastern Caribbean islands here. And then eventually there's going to be actually some chance here of seeing some tropical storm force winds for some areas like uh, southern Florida. Uh, we see up to a, uh, a uh, 10 to 20% chance here of seeing some tropical storm force winds. But again, if this one does form into a hurricane, uh, which again, it doesn't look like that's going to happen just based on what the... Um what the National Hurricane Center is saying, uh, we'd probably have higher probabilities for all of our areas here, at least for seeing some tropical storm force winds, uh, but we will continue to keep an eye on it as it moves along. And here would be our potential here of seeing some uh, some damaging winds here. So this is the probabilities here of seeing some 50 knot or 58 mile per hour winds 
um, within a one minute average here sustained. And that is equivalent to what the National Weather Service would issue for a severe thunderstorm warning. As this is capable of, of uh, causing damage to roofs, siding, and trees, as you probably heard in the National Weather Service warnings here. So there is at least some chance here, a slight chance of that happening for portions of the Eastern Caribbean islands and then extending up through uh, portions of the Southern Dominican Republic and Southern Haiti. There's at least some chance of seeing some severe winds here. And we don't really currently have much of a threat of seeing some hurricane force winds, but again, those models there are kind of consistent with this one potentially becoming at least a Category 1 hurricane. So we'll keep an eye on it. And then take a look at what the official cone forecast for this one is currently here. Uh, you can see in this highlighted, this uh, orange highlighted region here around this X, this is where we've already had some existing tropical storm force winds. And you can see this is expected to remain a tropical storm at least up until it hits about the Key West area here in southern Florida. Uh, which would be by about 2 a.m. on Tuesday here. We already currently have some uh, coastal tropical storm warnings in effect here for portions of the eastern Caribbean islands, along with some tropical storm watches surrounding that here. And that is expected to make landfall in those areas here by uh, early on Friday afternoon. So we'll have to keep an eye on that for sure. It looks like a lot of the Caribbean could potentially be impacted by um, the storm system here. It could potentially become a hurricane, but again, uh, the National Hurricane Center has not posed much attention to that happening. And take a look at our severe weather threat here, which will be our second part of today's video. You can see that currently we have a slight risk of severe weather here for portions of the mid-Atlantic states, uh, where some scattered severe storms are going to be possible this evening or th this afternoon into the evening here. We don't have much of a tornado threat or a much of a severe hail threat at all, and this will because the shear will be very, very weak. Um, and this will likely pose a very, very limited threat of both of those hazards occurring. But we do have a pretty considerable damaging wind threat here uh, throughout our entire slight risk or our entire slight risk area here. This is where we have the potential to seek some scattered damaging winds of over 58 miles per hour, capable of producing some damage here uh, within 25 miles of a given location. In this green shade here, this is where we could be looking at some isolated damaging winds here, a 5% chance of that happening within 25 miles of a given location. Uh, so really damaging winds will be our only threat with the storms today. And then we enter a very quiet pattern uh, for really all of the United States as far as severe weather goes throughout the course of the next week here. So this could be the last swath of severe weather throughout the course of the next week. And take a look at what the storms look like here. Uh, here would be our CAPE. CAPE stands for Convective Available Potential Energy. It's the measurement of instability and energy in the atmosphere for thunderstorms to occur. The more of it that there is, the more likely overall chance there is for severe weather to occur. If you see over 1,000 CAPE, which is indicated by these blue shades and above, there is enough instability for that to happen. And our storms are going to be relatively scattered here throughout the Appalachians into the uh, southern, or just throughout the... Uh, um, mid-Atlantic states here, uh, but we do see some favorable Cape for severe weather to occur, mainly ranging in the 1 to 3,000 range. And take a look at our bulk shear 0 to 6 kilometers above the ground level here. This is crucial in determining supercell formation. Typically, if you see over 45 knots of shear, which is indicated by these pink shades and above, uh, mixing in with storms that are kind of off on their own, which is uh, known as discrete storms, especially in an area of high Cape, there is a good chance that those storms could become supercells uh, because there is, enough, uh, rotate, there is enough shear in the atmosphere for those storms to start rotating, uh, which is ultimately what causes those supercells. And where most of these storms are going to be, the shear is going to be very, very slim to none, which is why we have an incredibly low uh, tornado and hail threat. We don't really have much of a chance at all of that happening. Uh, but there is maybe some existing chance for some severe weather of that nature to occur. It looks like in portions of northwestern New Jersey and potentially eastern Pennsylvania as well, because we do have some storms there that are going to fire up in that area of stronger shear. Uh, and on the southern side of it, they will be in an area of pretty high instability. Uh, this is by noon at this point here, so we'll have to keep an eye on it. These storms here scattered throughout the Appalachians, I think, are likely just going to be a damaging wind threat, if anything. As we take this to about 3 p.m. here, the Cape is still going to be strong out ahead of the advancing storms, especially in portions of southeastern Virginia. Take a look at the shear at this point. Again, it is going to be incredibly isolated, which will bring us a very low tornado and severe hail threat. And our storms here are going to form a bit of an unorganized squall line here, uh, stretching throughout western North Carolina into southern uh, Virginia here. And take a look at what our Cape is going to look like by the time that we get to about 6 p.m. here, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we're going to see some pretty uh, weak Cape out ahead of the advancing storms, but it still will be marginally favorable of some severe weather to occur, mainly ranging in the 1 to 2,000 range here in uh, central North Carolina, uh, which is eventually where that severe weather threat is going to likely die out, and our shear is still going to be uh, very unfavorable for 
uh, supercell activity to occur where these storms are going to be happening at this point. We do have an unorganized squall line here that will continue to march eastward and eventually off the coast of the United States uh, after we get through the evening hours. So that is going to wrap it up for today's video. If you guys did enjoy it and you want to see more of my videos, be sure to subscribe to Phantom Weather Channel. Also be sure to drop a like on the video and share this video out on social media if you guys would like other people to see this video as well. But until the next video, stay safe and we'll talk to you guys back here next time.